Malik Russell because look it's not just him scoring it's not just him hitting a three it's him making a guy like Trey McDonald better getting a three-point play and that's big too because I wasn't sure if it was Konate or King they got King for that foul so King and Walker starters from Minnesota have two fouls and a lot of coaches immediately take you out and they certainly did it with Walker and it looks like they're gonna do that with King and I would guess go to his own Conte inside over Loving, crawls it over the rim. Gordon Molly, the freshman, one of 14 children. Didn't play last year, turned 21 in mid-December. There's Russell pass Hollins. Caught it too easy, Mike. I'm telling you, it, it, if he can catch the ball easy, doesn't matter after that. You can get a stance all you want. He's going to get a shot. But if you make it hard for him to catch the basketball, he struggles. Sam Thompson going to pick up that foul for Ohio State. Watch this. He just comes off a little screen, catches the ball, and whips you away from the screen. Now, the other thing is, when you get a ball screen with Russell, you have to force him to the ball screen. There, Hollins got beat away. Never can you get beat away. Kid's got too many skills. He's got too many shots. You just make others beat you. Nice chance. Mr. Tarika with a one-handed, save the coffee, save me, catch on the inbounds. Thank you. It's nice. You replay, you want to do that for your little skit coming that time out? When the ball's being thrown away, you go up and you catch with one. I prefer to think of my, you call skit, me as America's learning moments. <laughs> Teaching moments, yes. <laughs> they all Time are. for America to learn. <laughs> Gather around, children. Keita Bates up in the game. The corner triple down again by Loving and Richard Petito. Going to take a timeout. And he should be hostile. They went over the screen on Loving. Loving faded it wide open. That's bad for Minnesota does not want to leave Russell. Russell sets a pretty nice screen. Now watch. Conte goes over the top. Canote goes over the top. You can't go over the top on Loving. You have to chase him. And when you chase him, he curls it, and then you can get help. It's off Ohio State. Last going to stay down here. Dan, I think this is going to be an important time for Minnesota with Hollins to get going because of Walker being out. It's a 12-point score a game. Patino's missing Joey King, nine a game, gave him 20 last night. So now you've got Jeju and Konate playing up front. So you've lost some of your scoring weapons. So that guy, Hollins, has to get going. Bates, yeah, couldn't keep it in, so it stays with the Gophers. All right, the other guy that you have to be aware of is Hollins. You know, because, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not Hollins, it's Morris. You talked about Hollins. Morris is a guy, as we said, can really get going. And the kid coming in now for Morris is Bugs, and that's what he does. He shoots the ball. Like, so many people make a mistake playing defense in guarding everybody alike. Like, in this situation, right now, Loving, guarding number one, should never, ever leave Hollins. Now it's, he left him watch. Lucky. Everything but the shot. Good work on the glass to keep it alive. Working inside, it's Gaston Jeju for two. The freshman from Senegal who was admitted to the school and joined the team on December 18th. And after passing his English proficiency exam, didn't play much, but as he's learned the rotations and all the other stuff necessary, he's come into the lineup a bit more. Ohio State lucky this is still their ball. McDonald turned it over. Speed of Matthew on the push. It's three straight misses for Hollins, who is starting to look a bit frustrated here. Loving goals over Gaston Jeju, and the foul is called. As good a four-year player as we've seen in college basketball, Christian Lehner did so many terrific things. The leadership, the talent, the shooting, the memorable moments. But a lot of people had Christian Lehner get under their skin. I Hate Christian Lehner is the name of the show. Nine Eastern, it's an ESPN Films, 30 for 30. Christian Lehner was up in Bristol on many of the shows during the mornings and afternoons over the last couple of days. Really enjoyed it. He's got a good attitude about it. And if anything... For those who are a generation or two removed and do not remember, didn't see all the things that those Duke teams and Leitner did, and I think that alone will highlight 
what a wonderful player he was. There goes Russell. Too good. <laughs> you, you can't give him any kind of angle, Mike. Okay, how do you guard him? Well, you don't let him get the ball. Then when he gets the ball, your shoulders always have to be square to his. Now, how do you do that? Well, you move your feet. Your feet can never stop. Even if you're beat a little bit, you have to keep your feet moving. That's a three taken by J.J. That is a rare three, and it's a big long. Turned it over. A teachable moment? Yes, sir. From Dan Dockage. It's coming up. America, alert your friends. We'll be right back. But still kept the head and the chin up for the basket as Mason scored a couple inside. And Russell's such a good finisher. I'm thinking of uh, of all the spouses who walked into the room as <laughs> their partner was standing there, and you said, "No, stand up, do it, do it at home, America." Yeah. There are people just and somebody walked in, goes, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Get my chin on the rim. Ready to ball. I want a three-point play. Here comes chin on the rim. Cam Williams chased down by Matthew. The finish from the red shirt freshman from Baltimore. The Buckeyes up four. Mike, I think Cam Williams is big, too. Loving it, Cam Williams are the two guys that can really light it up, get going. Obviously, D'Angelo Russell can, too. But that's what he's in for. Vinny Johnson type microwave type thing off the bench. We're talking about scouting. The Ohio State staff's outstanding in the job that they do. You can see them. Defensively directing traffic with their players, loving in the passing lane, took it away. Williams for three. That's the best play I've seen Loving make since he's come back. He has a different approach today, yep. and it's going to be enormous for the Ohio State Buckeyes. We got, we have to remind, and we alluded to it briefly. They got cleaned out at home, cleaned out by Wisconsin, embarrassed in the game on Sunday, and. The Buckeyes have come back, and when I saw Minnesota hit five of their first six shots, too. Really? No, no, they've come back with a purpose. They're locking down on this end over the last seven minutes. The Minnesota's offensive options are limited right now. Uh, bailout, Amir Williams with the foul. If I'm Ohio State, I'm excited what I just saw Amir Williams do there. He got a foul, didn't salt, went up, put two hands on the glass for some reason. But at least it was enthusiastic. When that kid plays enthusiastic, he can get a lot of things done on the backboard and he can get a lot of things done defensively. It's like A.J. Hammonds. A.J. Hammonds for Purdue all of a sudden decided to get excited and enthusiastic. Really good things have happened for Purdue. Timeout needs to be taken by Minnesota. You saw D'Angelo Russell come out. He's working on that left thumb there. And, uh, maybe he jammed or something. Remember, Russell had to come take a charge. Talk. Freshman on a team with a bunch of seniors in the rotation, but a big contributor. And in talking to the Ohio State staff, the many times we saw them during the year, he's such a good student of the game. Motor off the window is missed by Nate Mason. Back with Shannon Scott. Ohio State. Loving, lifted. Short. And you're not going to make them all, but Loving sprinted the floor, got himself in position, and screamed for the pass. Collins, one of four. Bugs will step out and take the three. Like they've got to get Morris back in or somebody. They've got to get somebody that they can count on that can score to go along with Collins. No field goals to three minutes here. Our guys in the truck doing an awesome job looking at it. This may be where the uh, first signs of any wincing or any pain was D'Angelo Russell with that left arm coming down on DeAndre Matthew. And he is uh, grimacing and in pain over there on the sideline. Doesn't take much. Quint? Mike, it looks like it's the tip of his left thumb as he's dipping it in, in a little... Uh a little water and ice right now on the sideline. Uh, not the entire thumb, but just kind of, kind of the, the tip near the uh, near the fingernail. Okay, keep an eye on it. Thanks, pal. Amir Williams inside going to the basket with some purpose. No surprise. Nothing great is ever done without enthusiasm, and when you get enthusiastic, great things happen, and Amir Williams just looks totally different. 8-0 run for Ohio State. So go back to him, Mike. Man, Man Williams out. tried to. Turned it over. This is what Quint was talking about. As he noticed that over there on the Ohio State sideline, and Russell still has that thumb in the cup. 
man. It's, it just deadened the Ohio State bench. They were getting ready. You could just feel it. And Williams let the ball go through his hands. But now you got a chance to make up for it on the defensive end. Here, it's four minutes without a field goal. Minnesota's made one of its last days. Since Walker and King got two fouls, they've had zero in terms of good looks. That's foul inside. Let's see, they tag Tate on that. They do. It's two on Jay Sean Tate, the freshman starter. So King came back with two, but Walker remains on the bench. Well, you have Eliason, who's a senior, and he's got to give you minutes. Again, like Amir Williams, you're a senior. Other guys are playing their hearts out. You've got to add to the fray. Elliot Eliason from Nebraska, redshirt senior. We saw his uh, greatest moment, perhaps, as a gopher. At the barn, they beat number one Indiana, and Elliot Eliason had like, a possessed seven-minute stretch, and the place was going nuts for him. Dominated he Cody did, Zeller. He did. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I don't know. I can't remember if he dominated Cody Zeller, but I'm, I'm sure he's going to say he did as he gets older. He's top ten all-time in blocks. He's tied with Michael Thompson yeah. on the all-time block list, a list that is led by Kevin McHale, coach of the Houston Rockets. Rockets Clippers Sunday on ABC, by the way. You doing that game? Yes, I am. Cam Williams. Eliason says Michael Thompson, I'm past you on the block list. And on the attack, wild release. Mason somehow found a way. Hey, because he got his chin on the rim. He was out of control. <laughs> you can be I'm telling you, you get your wrist under the ball, get your chin on the rim, have some decent hands, you'll make every leg. They had missed five straight field goals. And scratched in four and a half minutes, but Minnesota weathering through that storm in this zone. And a four-point deficit. Clock at 10, Sam Thompson. Great flash, that right spot in the zone. Here comes Eliason coming down to set the screen. Give their top scorer some room. All ball, they say. Mason missed the three, and Shannon Scott comes the other way as Russell. Ready to join the fray again. Well, he did. Again, Mike, a senior. I mean, Shannon Scott looks good. He stopped, popped right in front of Eliason, gave himself enough room. You can't say it enough in tournaments like this. If you're a senior, you, you just got to go. You got to play. Sam Thompson giving Morris no space. This is going up. He's not passing twice in one possession, Mike. You get one pass out of him, but you're not getting two. You know your players. <laughs> you, you, spent, you spent your life walking in gyms and figuring out, what does this guy do? <laughs> he got it. You know it, too. Cam Williams stepped right in with confidence. There you go. King on the rebound. So Hollins has two. King has three. Those two scores very important. Walker, who's in that foul trouble, has not scored. The three guys you figure Minnesota's got to have scored. They're not pressing, so they're not getting a lot of stuff out of their defense that we often see from Richard Pitino. Eliason rolled to the goal, but the angle was off with Morris and Eliason, and it's Ohio State ball on the other side. I'm a big fan of Elliot Eliason because he plays hard. Came right into the game and went past the number one pick in the 79 draft. The way here for Creighton, so Hoyas win back to Mike, and hopefully Dan standing underneath the net somewhere. No, no, we, we, we've got it back over at the table. Thank you, Adnan and Kara in the studio. Six-point Ohio State lead. This is 22-9 season for Ohio State, although when you peer through their resume, one thing they are devoid of is wins away from Columbus. They do not have a lot of road wins. Russell back in the game, eased into the three that is off. No, they don't. They don't play many road games. You know, they play the Big Ten games, the Big Ten tournament, but Big they, Ten ACC Challenge. Yeah, Big Ten ACC Challenge. I'm sorry, but they historically are never leave the home. Matthew. Oh, wow. What English off the window from Matthew. Let's check it with Quinn. Mike, the biggest concern in the Ohio State huddle, transition defense and the fear that DeAndre Matthew and Nate Mason can run free. 
uh, the coaching staff just, just harping, get back, get back. Under, do, do not underestimate the speed of those two uh, small guards. That's uh, one thing that Minnesota does to erase some of the things that they don't have right now is that speed. That was a wild pass turned over. And Russell's also now grabbing at that right eye in addition to the left thumb. D'Angelo getting beat up in this first half. D'Angelo was seeing three on that pass. King inside battling. He's got two fouls. Three from the right side from Matthew. And Loving goes up to get him. That was a great pass by Elias. I mean, a great pass. He skipped two people to find Matthew, just didn't connect. Scott No, and on the rebounding ruckus with McDonald and Eliason is the Ohio State big man Trey McDonald picking up his second. So we will be with you over on ESPN tomorrow afternoon. We'll watch Michigan and Wisconsin in the first of the quarterfinals. The four teams with the double buys join the tournament tomorrow, including Purdue. As they take on the surprise team thus far the first two days here at Chicago Penn State. So our Big Ten coverage wraps up with that doubleheader tomorrow afternoon. High noon, 11 a.m. Chicago time. Walker back in right away. Beautiful feed over the top. And it's a two-point game. I'll tell you this, Mo Walker just got and annihilate Amir Williams. Amir Williams was standing straight up, which is a position you should never be in in basketball. Mo Walker got lower. Russell trying to draw the contact. He couldn't get it. Matthews on the push. DeAndre Matthew has tied the game at 26. This kid, Russell, right now has a choice to make in this game. You, you said it, Mike. You get a little beat up. You get a little frustrated. Guys are playing harder than him. He's either going to get more casual if that's even possible or he's going to get low and he's going to get tough he has a choice right now Thompson through trap is that Walker Walker and King were there they both have two fouls and they got a Walker third foul big against Minnesota it's pretty nice in the middle of the zone again we talk about all the time this is a real skill and you see Sam Thompson was able to fish around with his athletic ability. Not a lot of guys are comfortable in the middle of the zone. Sam Thompson is. So six minutes, three fouls, just the one basket on that last trip for Walker. Thompson completes the three-point play, and Bukari Konate will come back in, the freshman from Mali, as Walker sits. 12 points a game, second in the league, 58% shooter from the field. Off told story of a guy who lost 50 pounds, really worked himself into terrific shape and has closed his college career in very solid fashion. Three knocked down by Holland. Tied at 29. And that ends a streak, Dan. They missed their last eight threes before that one. Well, that was as good a look as they've had. Freshman Russell, no. King battling inside. Beep, beep, there they go. And the foul. Drawn by the driving Hollands. He comes to the line on the other side. Good one so far in Chicago. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Expedia. The world is at your fingertips. Download the Expedia app today. Side cool on the other. Icebreakers duo, a fruity cool way to break the ice. That turkey looks good. Yeah, I'm eating right. I'm doing the tough dodger. What's the tough dodger? Oh, it's a triathlon, but with dodgeballs. <laughs> However, you're staying fit, start with a delicious Subway Fresh Fit sub like the protein packed turkey breast. Subway, eat fresh. That's it. What sorts of things are keeping you guys awake at night? Am I saving enough? Will I be able to save enough before retirement? My life expectancy now is 24 years. Uh, my money expectancy is about 15 years. I don't want to get to the end of the road and, and not have any money in the bank. An advisor can really help you look at the whole picture. I actually have a whole lot of unused vacation days, but where am I going to go? I just don't have the money to travel right now. 
I usually just go back home to see my parents, so I can't exactly go globetrotting. If I had friends to go with, I'd go, but I don't want to travel by myself. Someday. There are no more excuses. Find the hotel you want and the flight you want, and we'll find the savings to get you there. The ESPN Bracketology Special will tell you everything you need to know to fill out your bracket. That's not a no-brainer. That, that's a very difficult matchup. And if anyone can stop Kentucky, just the pass it, catch it, defend. Boom. The ESPN Bracketology Special, Sunday at 7. I'm Ad Van Ver coming up on the Heroes Charge halftime report. Oh, yeah, it's March. Longhorns heartbreak as they blow a 16 point lead against Iowa State. Carol Lawson, on what went wrong for Texas coming up at the half? Plus, the seeds of success. Bubble teams have been in peril, but the top clubs so far have shown why they are seated that way. For now, back to Mike and Dan. The good big picture on that. Watch the SEC and ACC for important games. Here it's all tied. Dan, what do you want to show us? Well, I want to show you the easiest guy to screen is the guy that gave up the ball. You're going to see Andre Hollins right here. Watch his defender, Shannon Scott. This is something good teams do. The passer gets screened. Scott kind of jumps to the ball, relaxes. You screen the guy that gave it up. Think about it this way. I'm all in a stance when I'm guarding the ball. Mm -hmm. As soon as my man gives it up, usually the natural reaction is to relax. Right. Next thing you know, you screen that guy, you usually get a pretty good look. Screen the passer, screen the screener. Got a lot of things to screen, Mike. And the teams, that do, the, the teams that do a lot of that are the ones who you really would hate to see in a second game at a site. Oh, look at that tip in! So Amir Williams is in there, and Matthew, the little man, at all, what, five foot nine of them, they will get the hoop. Man, man. I mean, what is that, a foot? A foot and two inches, Amir Williams? Difference? And he couldn't get it there. Russell. Again, short on the three. Short on the last couple of shots since that thumb injury. Really doesn't shoot with a ton of legs into his shot, but he had a good snap on the ball. The first time he made an adjustment and, and really snapped the pat the shot. It's like cut Hollins tried the crazy reverse. Kept alive nicely by Jeju. Cast on Jeju. Bakari Konate playing important minutes because of the foul trouble with King and Walker from Minnesota. Hollins launches in short. He's just two of seven after being blanked last night. Loving no out of the corner. You have bodies on the floor contesting the rebound. And it's a foul on Minnesota. We're going to trick you a little bit here. Here's a shot. Watch this. Can't really tell on that angle who got it. Now this angle you're going to tell very clearly. Right there. You see, how quick was that? That was quick not only with his hand beating Amir Williams there, but it was quick to pop up in the air. Now, having said that, congratulations to Matthew. But that can never, ever happen to Amir Williams. Or anybody over six feet tall. Hollins the foul. Scott at the free throw line. Good start for Shannon, Shannon Scott. He's often discussed, son of Charlie Scott, North Carolina, NBA. ABA as well, I believe. His son Shannon so had a good career here at Ohio State. As he waited, Aaron Kraft ran the point. Scott joined Kraft in the backcourt last year. All his show to run. And get it to that guy is a good way to run the show. Scott to Russell gets one near the basket and the Buckeyes back on top. Yeah, it's good to see Russell didn't settle for standing in the corner in a penetrating pitch. He just went straight back cut and Scott found him. You don't have to run for a three. You know what I mean? You can, you can run for a layup. Layups are good. Morris lost it. Sloppy on the outside with Minnesota. Russell brings it back for Ohio State. Made it 45 to the half. Like, I think if they can set Loving up with another shot like he just missed, I think he's going to knock it in. Russell off on that three. Back tap by Amir Williams. And Ohio State's assistant coach, Greg Paulus, who handles so much of their offense, up and calling out the play to Scott. And the cut by Loving. 
What a screen. They ran Loving from right to left, and then perfectly timed Shannon Scott went and set a back screen. Morris Gardy's uh, Williams just fell asleep on it, or Thompson, excuse me. What a time to cut and screen. Nice close to the half here. Ohio State's in position four. They've scored the last six. Minnesota has not much going on here. Matthew just throws it up to Kodate. Inside, he's called for the travel. Petito wanted the foul call. Mention the NBA, the basketball tenants of this building, the Chicago Bulls in Oklahoma City take on the incredible Russell Westbrook and the Thunder. And as mentioned earlier, the Rockets take on the Clippers at Staples. It's our NBA Sunday showcase. The pregame begins 12.30 Eastern time. Ohio State has the use it or lose it timeout. 17 second difference in the game of shot clock. He gets this zone with Eliason in the middle of it. Clock's down to seven. Thompson found space and he found loving cutting. Good and finish. Will Minnesota take the last one? Will they take a quick one? Matthew, nothing going. Mason, a deep three. Dropped it. Oh. What a half for that kid. But guys with time. It's nearly lost. Scott on the floor. It's loose. Somebody's got to put it up quick. Morris tried. No shot. And after 20 minutes, we've decided nothing. Minnesota got through very sloppy with a couple turnovers. He's going to be the difference in the game for Ohio State. He's got a choice to make. Get serious, go at Andre Hollins, or let Andre Hollins continue to frustrate him. It was the Buckeyes' eight-point lead with just under nine minutes left in Minnesota. Closed the half out 19-11. to He gets us here at 35. Ohio State comfortably in the field for most, trying to work on their seating. And uh, when you take a closer inspection at the Buckeyes' resume, they could use a few wins here in Chicago. King, right out of the gate, gets on the board and puts Minnesota back on top. Yeah, nice cross screen. Again, same thing as Ohio State did in the first half. Pretty good timing on a cross screen. Ball in the right position. Got it to the right guy. You know, Mike, it, it is amazing. And it, the only screens we see most times are on the ball. But if you just screen a little bit off the ball, teams don't really know how to guard it from both positions. The man being screened and the man guarding the screener. This is deep for Shannon Scott. His shot has improved a lot, Dan. He has a really good looking stroke. And you're right, Mike. I, he came here as a guy that really wasn't a shooter. Okay, feeling it. He, he did that a few times last time. Like, really? Okay. Yeah, and he's done it the last couple of games, too. Oh, yeah. He was big in the final home game. They lost on a DJ Newble shot, but King was getting it done. Tate took it in traffic. Eliason in there. They're back in the zone, and Walker not starting the second half with the three fouls. Interesting move by Patino. Let's try to buy some extra time, perhaps. Well, you don't really get hurt. Amir Williams isn't an offensive threat. Tate at the basket. And so you can get away with playing Eliason early. Tate gets his first Big Ten tournament points. As the freshman was shut out on two field goal attempts in the first half. By Hollins, saw Williams there, got knocked away. Morris going up. Thompson goes higher to get the rebound. That shot was a little bit wild, to say the least. Russell sees two, they get it out of his hands. The rest of you Buckeyes come beat us. That's exactly right. And Shannon Scott's made shots, but now you got to make him here throughout the course of the second half. But you have to trap this kid, not let him get in the gaps. Nice pass to take. Elias and Gosh, it's so simple. It's no big deal. You've never seen it in a box score, but that was pretty sweet. Here's Quint. I'm sorry, before Quint. Let's go over where they scored in the first half. No mid-range game either way. One Ohio State three made. Yeah, as he's even in the paint. Yeah, as we said, you know, Loving made one, missed a couple, and this kid here, D'Angelo Russell, he's missed all five. His mid-range step back take. Eliason trying to keep it alive, battling with Amir Williams. And Eliason calls the foul. 
And as promised, now Mr. Kessnick, it's your turn. Yeah, I spoke to Thad Mata about D'Angelo Russell. He specifically said he's been short on most of his threes. He'd like to see him drive to the basket more. He said a couple times in that first half, his teammates let him down by not converting. The last Ohio State basket was exactly what they wanted to see, Russell penetrating and kicking to a teammate. I said, Coach, how's he going to get going? He goes, because he's a great player. That, that's how he's going to get going, and he always does. And Shannon Scott going in this half. He's got five. And Ohio State's returned that quick early Minnesota triple to take a two-point lead. Morris working inside. Scott met him, but Morris finishes at the basket. Yeah, he just went right by D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell was in a stance and really getting handsy with him. But no avail. Short again. Couldn't get the bounce, couldn't get the tip, and Eliason takes the rebound away from Minnesota. We've not seen any full court pressure from the Gophers in this one. Oh, look out. The bodies collide, and we've got the foul on the contact of driving Morris. Is going to be tagged with the call here. And that, second bad decision on the last three possessions by Morris. Watch, Morris wide open. He had the whole side of the court, and then he decided to take off on a drive. Look at the noise around him to shoot the ball. Instead, he decided. Patino was very angry, but that seemed to be a very easy call. I don't know if he's mad. He should be mad at Morris. As you said, that was easy. It could have been. Yeah, it could have been. Well. Like the look of Scott here in his half. Mm. Couldn't make it, chased it down. Russell at the basket. Great players. Pete Newell told me this a long time ago. Great players finish around the bucket, and they're the only ones jumping. You understand what I'm saying? Like there's there's sure. traffic, and whoa, he just scored. And Denzel Russell just did that there. Mason is off. Conate's back in. He tried to chase it down. Joey King. Conate now the bigs on the floor. Russell another three. There it finally goes down for D'Angelo. He missed his first six threes. Keep shooting. Finally get one. And Ohio State's got a good little run going here. Thad Mata just pointed at Russell. Mm -hmm. like, hey, yep. we're, just keep doing it. We know you're going to do it. Keep doing it. And as he told Quinn, great players do it. Plug at 10, Russell all over King. Now they exchange, it's Mason out top. Oh, crossover, nice. Fake pass, nice. Turnover, not nice. We'll stay down here. Three on the shot clock on the other side of this timeout. Ohio State, the edge out of the gate to start this half. You led Indiana to the championship game. Bit his good friend, Duez Henderson, in a game one time in a pile. Duez played for Iowa. <laughs> Shot clock at three. <laughs> it's not high on his resume. Walker back in. Hollins, very deep. Too late. Shot clock violation. Didn't get it out in time. So Ohio State, which is always exceptional because of their staff, their scouting, on making inbounds passes tough for the opponent, made that one tough enough that they forced the turnover. Yeah, and what they do is they put a big, Amir Williams or Trey McDonald in this case, on the ball, very active with their hands up, and then just switch everything. Now the cross goes without a switch. It's very effective. A lot of teams in the Big Ten have started doing that, including Indiana. Indiana won the first game of our night session doubleheader. Shannon Scott rimmed out the three. Look at Thompson. Go up. Get it. And put it back in. Sam Thompson now has a half dozen. Hollins got bumped. Trey McDonald just... <laughs> it's like, hey, I, I was just standing here. He ran into me. <laughs> I don't blame him. Get McDonald for the foul. There's the score of the Indiana Northwestern game earlier today. Penn State which came up with the win over Nebraska in the first round. Beat Iowa in a game that Iowa just really let slip away in the second half. They shot very poorly from the field. So Penn State will see Purdue tomorrow. And then Michigan, you saw with their win over Illinois, a team that had hopes of getting on a run in Chicago and having some success, getting the support down here that they often get. 
But uh, they go out with a very lifeless effort in that one, a tough end to their season. You know, Mike, I agree their effort was lifeless. But you, in that game, you got to give Michigan unbelievable credit. Like, they they came right out. Aubrey Dawkins started hitting shots. Right from the start of the game. Right from the start. They're up double digits in the first five yeah. minutes. And, and I thought Abdul Rahman played about as good a game, he along with Spike Albrecht, as I've seen him play. And Michigan played as well as they played. Russell tried to draw the contact, looking for the foul. So is the Ohio State bench. They get nothing. Your son, Andrew, got in. Got a lamp at the end of the game. So Andrew Dockich has more Big Ten tournament points than you in and his more, career. And more Big Ten tournament wins. <laughs> <laughs> Hollins at the basket, met by Russell and Thompson. Back the other way is Tate. A lot of contact. King no call in the basket for Ohio State. Wow. Half here for Shannon Scott. He's got seven of his 50. They've done a nice job, they being Tate and Scott, of taking away Joey King. Joey King had the first two buckets, and now they are out on him, not giving him any. Three is long and off. It's with a poor shooting second half for Minnesota. Poor shooting in for Hollins, and hey, you got to stop the ball. They couldn't stop Tate, and he earns these free throws. Ohio State pulling away here a little bit at the start of this half. We say in every broadcast we do Ohio State, this kid Tate is going to be an absolute star. His dad was a fantastic player, Jermaine, both here and at Cincinnati. But this kid, underside, you can make a million different reasons why he's not a Big Ten player. The number one reason is he knows how to play. I'm sorry. The number one reason is you see him right there, enthusiastic, tough, want to, and then he really knows how to play. This kid's going to be a star in this league if he isn't already. A little chit-chat going on there. Russell, Scott, Tate. And Matthew tagged for that foul and started with uh, Matthew and Tate. But, uh, not so accidental. Now that, in the NBA, that, that cost Dante Jones ten thousand dollars while he day day Draymond Green during yeah. a post game interview with Lisa Salters. Draymond Green, who's one of our all time favorites because he has great personality, said. In the post game, how dumb is he? he did it on ABC. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's awesome. Loving back in. Hey Dan, just one last point talking about Illinois and their loss. Illinois 19 and 13 certainly would be a team that you would likely see in the NIT. Illinois Arena, State Farm Center there in Champaign. The, the whole lower bowl is completely torn out now. We're in the process thereof. They're doing massive renovations over the next two years. They had to start that right away, so they're not going to be able to play an NIT game in Champaign. Walker travel. Tough game for Walker here. Two points, foul trouble, and a turnover. Let me tell you why he traveled. Walker is a guy that likes to feel you as a defender. He likes to feel contact and then react accordingly. Amir Williams backed off. Just automatic bid. Why are you circling North Florida and Wofford, mm, sir? Man, I like both those teams when you're filling out your bracket. Take a little look-see at those two teams, Mike. They were fun to watch, both of them. And North Florida has gone and played people, including beating Purdue at Purdue. They went to Northwestern, lost a two-point game. Lost by 10 to Iowa. The Ospreys, or Ospreys, led by Lee Moon, the athletic director, who's been a friend for a long time. Tried to hire me twice. I'm saying he's a smart friend, but... <laughs> say, it's a guy, a good friend. Yeah. Apparently, I wasn't a good friend to him. I didn't take the job. Williams denied inside as Walker was there. But those two teams are good. Fun to watch. Well, Walker's... Getting... Draw the foul on Ohio State. Always dangerous with Walker in foul trouble and nothing going on here. It'll be on the Buckeyes. D'Angelo Russell picking up his first. Of course, Russell, freshman of the year in the conference. Easy pick, first team, all conference. Top scoring freshman in the nation and many feel one and done player. All the draft boards you look at, he's right there. Three, in some cases two. We'll see how that plays out as the draft process gets going. But needless to say, it's been a tremendous first season now. Can he hit right that Carmelo Anthony type chapter and run a team as a freshman through the tournament here? Sam Thompson picks up this Buckeye foul, his second. Mike, the reason I think that Russell is capable is because he he legitimately makes others better. Problem you have is 
again, I go back to the tournament play. You can make all these great passes, find guys, but you got to be able to make shots, and you got to be able to make shots consistently from the three-point line or 18 feet. And I question that without Mark Loving or Cam Williams really going. Those two guys have to go because they make Russell better as well. One more coming for King at the line. And that's why I look at this team dead end. We're a little bit guilty of stacking up 20 win seasons, and we've seen these players as a part of it, but they have been, for the most part, complementary players. We have Thompson and Williams and Scott. And they, they need to be the star guys for Ohio State, and if Loving plays well with them, and what we expect from Russell, it, it's, it's a hard-to-read team. Yeah. But, you know, if I was a Buckeye fan, I would, I would, you know, whatever that Thursday or Friday is, whatever the site is, it's two in the afternoon, and you sit down to watch Ohio State play, I, I would just have this little belief that they could make a run because of the tournament experience, the tough games, and the pure talent of guys like this loving okay. inside. Totally agree. And look, if you're saying to Mike right now, Hey, I can't watch a 2 o'clock game on a Thursday. I'll get fired. Well, you know what? You're probably going to get fired anyway. If just because you missed one afternoon of work, you weren't that good at your job. Williams with the block. Are you going to advocate that again this year? Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of trouble there. And the timeout was verbally called by Richard Petino before Mason could fall out of bounds. Danger zone here for Minnesota, 12-27. That's why I think this conference is hard to read how many get in and what damage they can do. I think you should say Wisconsin, Maryland, the bigger part. Well, here's, you mentioned Ohio State, certainly they're a confusing team. I'll give you a team that I think is going to make a run. And when you look at all the statistics, defense, mm -hmm. offense, Michigan State does everything well but make free throws, Mike. Right. And, okay, yeah, you got to make free throws when you play in the Big Ten or in the NCAA tournament. I get all that. But, man, they, de they defend, they shoot it. They're tough. I think Tum Tum Naren has given them a different kind of energy. Certainly. I look for that team to get to the Sweet 16. I really do. Minnesota's hit one of its last eight field goals here. They are struggling inside there. Quick whistle on the inbounds. Russell's going to be called for the hold, his second foul. You mentioned the Spartans, the opponent next for these teams. A high RPI because of an extraordinarily tough non-conference schedule, as always. 12 wins in the league, thus they earn the double bye. They had the loss around Christmas time to Texas Southern. Well, Mike, again, I just look at certain things. What do we have here? It was tipped by Williams. The ball then dropped out of bounds. This is going to discuss this here. Was it tipped after a pass? It slipped out of his hand. The inbounder, Bugs. And so, see, all that becomes is a delay of game warning. Really? That should not be a delay of game warning. That should just be out of bounds underneath because you can't determine. Well, they said you can't reach over the line to come get it. Well, you come do that while he's holding the ball. Right. It's he's a typical foul. Yeah, the ball's being passed, and it, you can't determine whether it slipped out of his hand or passed. And the, the ball's going forward out of his hand. And you can't blame Williams for doing anything there, so it's no harm, no foul. Well, that's Walker call. is a foul, and that is four on Maurice Walker. First, this is the first out of bounds here. You see the ball is passed. He did reach over, so I guess that would be the deal. Now, look, here, watch the switch. They switch it so well. There are those in broadcasting that may say that was a flop. I say if you get Big Mo Walker hitting you, unless you've been hit by him, you don't know how hard it is. And I haven't been hit by him, and I plan never to be hit by him. But live, it seemed like he got hit pretty good. Russell. Well, it's four on Walker, who has only given them two points on three shot attempts and two rebounds. That is it. Russell, three there, and Ohio State extends it to double digits. Biggest lead of the night. Missed his first six threes, hit his last two. In between, took a charge. In between, made a few really nice passes, too. Good special. on the drive going up and going in Carlos Sparks. Yeah, and the difference there Mike he went to the rim he didn't have a shot the ball was reversed got to him he beat the guy he turned down earlier for a charge about a wide open three five minutes 45 seconds between field goals for Minnesota 
Now they're going to have to dig in on this end. They've built a hole here after being tied to the half. Scott circled the world and found Loving. Shot fake, go inside and try to drop it for Amir Williams. Just out of his reach. And it's Ira. This, my friends, is an All-American. I mean, sprinting off screens, catching it. Not only necessarily on the bubble, but teams that want to improve their resume. Oklahoma State in this stacked Big 12, ESPN2, right here this time tomorrow night. You see already the 1, 2, and 4 have advanced. Iowa State in dramatic fashion. Beating Texas, a team that was in need of a win. Near Williams and Shannon Scott with the defense. Shots. Scott will be called for the foul. They're going to tell us Sunday night. I can't wait. Who's in, who's out? You don't, you don't enjoy the back and forth of trying to figure it out? Truthfully? Yeah. I really don't. I like looking at teams and what maybe they need to do, but I, you know what I really like doing? Sitting here with you courtside and calling games and watching teams battle like crazy to get in, mm -hmm. in the tournament. I really enjoy that. And you see a team like Michigan just beat down a team that you would think has everything to play for. Let's go in Illinois. I, I, I like that. I, you can do both. You can like both. I get it. Well, the, these conference tournaments, especially for the multiple big league, big leagues, has long been criticized as, is it just done for the finance? A variety of reasons that you could pick at these. But the one thing about it is it does make the NCAA tournament Open to everyone. He's had a right. terrible season. Look at Penn State. All these close losses, 4 and 14, as Scott misses the jumper. Whether you like it or not, it's like the, the Hoosiers, the Indiana State High School Tour, where everybody gets the chance in. You know, you play your district, your sectionals. Right. That's what, that's what this is. Okay. And Penn State's won two. Now they've got to win three more. It's a huge task to win five at once. Remember, Georgia did it when that uh, tornado came through downtown Atlanta in the SEC tournament. Bugs off on the three. Russell, the rebound for Ohio State halfway through the half. You know, while, while everybody's whining about, well, it's only for money or it's only for this or coaches, whatever. You know who loves these things? Players. Players love to play for championships. And, you know, let's think about it. you got a preseason tournament championship. You've got a conference season championship. You've got a conference tournament championship. Players love this. And it's going to be called a flagrant one, I would believe, on Hollins. No play on the ball on the drive, just grabbed an arm. And our officials will come over and take a look at it. Just pulled Shannon Scott by that left arm. The intentional foul is called. And no reason to go to the monitor, just clear call and Scott to the line for two. Now that's good officiating. We have been steered away from the term intentional foul because that's not really in the book. And as we said at the beginning, there is flagrant one because of the no play on the ball. And that should be the right call. Now you so mentioned, comes to the you mentioned danger time. It, it, the feeling here is like Ohio State's up a ton. I mean, mm -hmm. 11 yes. points 10 minutes ago. That's not a whole lot. Good pass from Russell inside. And Trey McDonald will come to the line as he draws the foul. You know, Dan, you, you talked about uh, the, the conference championships and the players like me. That's, I had the, the great pleasure doing the Big East for five or six years. And it always struck me as it was really cool for the players. For your life, you can walk away and say, we want a championship at Madison Square Garden. Right. That's the same thing in this league because these players love the chance, whether it's the United Center or in Indianapolis, Bankers Life Fieldhouse. This tournament will move to Washington, D.C. And then after that to Madison Square Garden and be played a week ahead of championship week coming up in four years forever. Nothing you can ever take away from D'Angelo Russell. Say, we want a championship for Ohio State in the United Center. That's really cool. So it is in many ways something the players can take to oh, let's, not, let's be honest the money part the tv part's a big deal but that's how you decide to deal your automatic bid that's great morris from the top knocks down the three carlos morris 35 percent shooter that's what minnesota needs now some triples some easy offense downtown and this doesn't matter Mike, but i guarantee you 
75% of players in this tournament will have a picture of them outside Michael Jordan's statue. You know what I mean? I mean, that's not the reason to play a tournament. I get it. But players like playing in these buildings. They like playing in these events. And if they don't, they wouldn't be here. I'll say as leagues have grown around the country, the feel of the tournaments has gotten a little bit different because of the extra days. Thompson fighting, trying to take it away. Who hit it last? Minnesota did. It will stay. It will go back to, really, Ohio State. Boy, that's a bad break. Morris played terrific defense on the back cut, came up with the ball, just lost his balance, and the coordination between moving backwards and trying to dribble out in front of you just, it doesn't work. I think the ball would have to be in Russell's hand constantly here. That's, that's a bad shot. Thompson got fouled as he elevated up high. You just get the feeling that Russell's now comfortable in the game. It was physical. He had he had gotten some banged up a little bit. He hadn't gotten some calls that he felt like he wanted, but it, comfortable now it has to be the dominant player with the basketball. Speaking of those conference tournaments, the American Championship will continue on. East Carolina and SMU will be here on ESPN2 at noon Eastern time. Tomorrow, East Carolina knocked out UCF, and then Memphis and Temple. Temple's one of those teams that has mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity to win a couple of games and make more of an impact on the committee, which is meeting in Indianapolis. We'll sign up the Final Four. And you mentioned on your radio show, downtown Indy already starting to really feel like a big event is coming. Yeah, the JW Marriott has the big bracket on the side of it. A couple of restaurants have the big band. It's really cool. With a strong team. That's a good end one on the drive by DeAndre Matthew. That is a great drive by Matthew who explodes over an exasperated Trey McDonald. Let's see here. Trey McDonald thought he was putting his hands up, which he was, but I think, you know, when you turn your body, you get bad things happen. Let's put it that way. You see, Trey McDonald feels this is the second time <laughs> yeah. that he has been, I'm not sure the right word, robbed by the officials in his mind? Wronged. Wronged, Wronged by the officials. Yeah. Softer term. Yeah. Matthew, the three-point play, and back to eight. And as we mentioned, Minnesota near the top of the country, fifth in steals, put on some pressure. Ohio State releases it quite well. Cam Williams had a flash, but I thought, do I shoot? Wait, wait, it's eight points. <laughs> Let's take some time off the clock here and get it back to one of the top players in the league in Russell. Travel? Good call. Yeah, great call. Great call. Dribble handoff, simple stuff, and Amir Williams just went to sleep. Really, there's any reason for Mir Williams to ever handle the ball out there. You know, I know they wanted a handoff, and he was going to dive, and that's a way of getting him on the block. But Amir Williams, at this position, you know, shouldn't be given the ball, though. What's going up, Mike? And it's Morris. <laughs> it's off. Good rebound. Bugs inside. Tops of the board. Can't you just tell when Morris is going to aim right. and let her fly? And they needed a good shot there. Yeah. They could have gotten a six or five. And now Ohio State saying, we've been in control of this. Matthew tried to get the steal. He could not. And they got the foul on Williams as Minnesota over the limit. 7.41 to go. The winner gets Michigan State tomorrow night. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you. And Dave Passion, Bill Walton settling in in Las Vegas for Utah and Stanford. They'll also have the championship game Saturday night. It's always best to keep your mouth shut, unless you are an announcer or host a radio program. Andy Einfeld, Steve Alford arrived in Los Angeles, same time. Einfeld off of three good wins. Florida Gulf Coast coach got them to the NCAA tournament. Yes, one in the conference championship and two in the NCAA tournament. And Alford at UCLA has, Enfield, excuse me, has absolutely abused him. So it, it, it after I, Enfield said that, well, you come here to play with fun and score, and we'll offer just drop 96 on. So it's always best 
to hush, as my mother used to say. Give your chin a rest, as my dad used to say, unless you're hosting a radio show or on TV. <laughs> That's how you've explained it away over the years. <laughs> right, here's Walker back in the fourth. Four fouls going right into Amir Williams. Being tough inside, and he got an end run. So I don't know what Amir, I'm sorry, Mike, but I don't know what Amir Williams is supposed to do here. Watch the right arm of Walker here. Backs him in. Boom. Right there in the left. You can't even see it, but the right arm absolutely shoved off Williams. Now, if Williams falls down, then that's going to be a charge, but Williams didn't, so it's a three-point play. Richard Sr. from Scarborough, Ontario. Seeing a lot of players have success in college basketball last few years in Canada. Directly correlates with the Toronto Raptors and their success. That Vince Carter year about 20 years ago, those players as they get to 19, 20 years old, they really built terrific uh, stars in Canadian basketball, especially that Toronto and those suburbs. Walker has developed into one of those. Jay John Tate inside, and he is fouled. Yeah, that's not going to stop either. Grassroots basketball in Canada is absolutely fantastic. You know, bounce AAU program really good. There's a number of them that kids all over Canada are playing everywhere in the United States in the summer. So it was really good. And I attribute that to Adnan Pro. <laughs> Say John Saunders. Say at the line for one more. I will tell you that we, we go to the Big Ten atmospheres, see the NBA in the playoffs. It's great stuff. The single best atmosphere I was in last year for a basketball game for work was in Toronto game seven of the Raptors net series and we had thousands of people on the plaza outside the Air Canada Center before the game they just they really bought in it was great to have that talent infusing college basketball and obviously the coaches aware of it look to recruit them can I make one suggestion to the Toronto Raptors because it just it annoys me on TV they put that 3D advertising underneath the basket <laughs> it's a great drive <laughs> it makes me crazy by how is these people are falling down Ohio State's been dry in the field goal column for five minutes. Their lead is eight. They have had control of the second half, but Joey King, 24 Minnesotans out there. If there's a stop and a three or two from King, the complexion of the last few minutes is going to change considerably. This is off of Ohio State last. He goes to Minnesota. Too many other guys making plays right now, Mike. It's one thing to make plays in the first half. But as you know better than anybody covering the sports that you cover, last 10 minutes got to be your stars. And D'Angelo Russell is not the guy making these plays, and that needs to change for Ohio State. And this kid here, Hollins, or as you said, Joey King, have to be the guys for Minnesota. Kick the reset. That modern Ohio State have always done well in the Big Ten tournament here. But tonight, he has the opportunity to become the all-time leading winner in terms of coaches at Ohio State by passing the legendary Fred Taylor and also get his 400th career win. Never had a year where he didn't win 20. <laughs> Just... Out of the corner, the three. Got down, and game is tightened back up. Collins hits it. He's been quiet. Only... A couple of field goals, and now the Gopher fans in the house being heard a bit. Five points, five and a half to go. Back to your star. Need a hoop, D'Angelo. No. Walk to the rebound. Matthew the push. King is trailing. He'll triple. Oh, he thought about it. He was loaded. He was ready to let it go. Matthew, it's C. Parting. And one. Seniors, 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 and more seniors. First it was Hollins in here. Look at Amir Williams. Doesn't move his feet. But earlier, this should have been a violation. Nobody touched it. Matthew, excuse me, Mason got the ball out to Hollins for three. Big no call, but Amir Williams got to protect the bucket. But this kid's played hard all day. This kid yes. has come in here to Minnesota and played really well for a couple years. Well, Walker's been in foul trouble. King was in foul trouble in the first half. Hollins is 3 of 12. I know yeah. he just hit that three, but Matthew has been the life of the energy. It is a two-point game with a ton of time left. 
Tell you what, Mason's done a nice job. Really nice job on Russell. Get organized. Time out here for Ohio State with 5.09 to go. You know, he was, the two Hollands is last year, and then the addition of Matthew were pretty good guys to start building around. Yes. Yes. I just think that sometimes when you implement what Coach Patino's trying to do as he switches the zone here, which was effective in the first half. He trap out of the zone, too. Russell recognizes loving and the walk right to let him go. Can't do that, Mark. He can't mess around. A great anticipation by Greg Paulus and Thad Mata getting Russell into the middle of the zone. And once he gets it, it is over. But, Mike, it just takes a few. You know, he's going to have to recruit well. Walker gets denied inside by Russell. Russell made a great pass. Comes up with a big block. His third. They had no field goals for 645. That trap was just no conceived. Yeah, a great sign of the preparation, too, like you said, of Ohio State. Russell turned the corner. Oh, deflected off of Williams last. Yeah, it did. Didn't it? It did. I didn't see. I, th I thought it was off of Walker first. DJ Carthenson was all over yeah, the No question about it. Okay. The tip is going to happen right there, and then right there, off of the right finger, right hand. And you see, just by the fact that he put his hand behind his back, Amir Williams tells you he caught the cookie it. jar. Yep. Got to be Hollins here, playing somewhere with King. It's great scouting in this league. Minnesota called the set play. Ohio State's bench saw it. They reacted to it, told their players what was coming. King still got the open three, and he missed it. Under four. Buckeyes by four. In Thompson space. Russell off the curl. Chased down by Thompson. And a reset here with three and a half to go. To Loving, the shot clock at 13. Now come get it, Russell. Come do something. Get everybody flat. Williams comes to set the ball screen. Beautiful split by Russell. Contact is inside with Matthew. And he'll pick up the fouls. We get to 308. He's smiling at you. <laughs> Normal people just don't make basketball look that easy. You just don't. Trying to do what they did in the bar in January. Where currently Notre Dame is having some fun. Guys, back to you. Notre Dame handling Miami at that, a team that needed one there. Meantime, here in the Big Ten, we're trying to find our final quarter finalist to join Michigan, Wisconsin, Penn State, Purdue, Indiana, and Maryland. The winner here gets Michigan State tomorrow night. Two games tomorrow night on the Big Ten Network. Well, the two afternoon games over on ESPN. Russell hit both. He has 17. And you were saying, as we were 18, and you were saying as we went to break, he just does things so smoothly. Kind of glides his ability to break down the defense. Mike, it, 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 there are a lot of really good players that do things easy, but he, he does hard things easy. You know what I mean? Like, yep, it's great. Well said. Hollins was in trouble. Luckily, he was able to find Walker inside, who got the commitment on Loving and got the three point opportunity. Big guys. Know that you're big. That kid right there is big, Mo Walker. He caught the ball. Watch him take his time here, Mike. He's going to catch it. He's big. I got the ball close. Shot fake. Go get strong. Don't fall. Stop. Gather. Show the ball. Draw contact. Chin on the rim. Three-point play. Now knock in your free throw. Okay, two-point play. He did not. Four of their last five field goals have been end one, end one opportunities for Minnesota. Yeah, I, However you want to get him a matchup, you go ahead and get him. Wow. Ten count. Ten count. Minnesota ball. Yep. Good call. Good call. What a chance here for Minnesota. Oh. Down four. 
I feel like they've not been in this game. Gotta find Holland, Mike. Walker the seal, tough shot. That's why you gotta find Holland. That's a freshman. Hey, all that stuff goes well in the first five, ten minutes of the game. That's great. But in this situation, two and a half, two minutes ago, you got Hollins out there. You got Matthew Senior. You got, you got Walker. Ball, you, you got, got inside Walker a couple of times. You got three and ones. Let's go. Man, no question. That's right. Inside of two minutes, Walker out to Hedge, loving his free. React to the shooter. See what Russell can do. Late shot clock. The flatten out. No ball screen this time. Yeah, he okay. for one late. And it's three. And it's good for Russell. And Ohio State calls a timeout. Oh, Remember, Mike, what did he do in the first half? Now, okay, seven-point deficit, right? All right. You, you got you to gotta score. You cannot just panic and take a crazy shot. Get something going to the rim. Find the next. Get a great shot here. Ohio State may take you out of it because they're so good defending out of time. It's back on the drive. Five-point game. That was so good, Mike. They, they, they brought Matthew from left to right, acted like they were going to set a ball screen, made Amir Williams jump out, cleared the weak side, or cleared the back side, and got laid. That was really good, really good move by Richard Patino. It's five with 112 left. Minnesota has committed 10 fouls, so every foul, two free throws for Ohio State. I didn't foul him, but if Williams touched it, I foul him. Clock at 11, loving, spinning. Gets to Sam Thompson. Scott's going to drive. That Matthew at the rim. Shannon Scott, who's had a good half with the finish. Just something you don't see. Matthew looked to his right, took a peek, looking for a ball screen coming. Scott just blew by him to his left. Career high in scoring. Hollins hits the outside shot. Timeout, Patino. And Minnesota with 46.1 to go. And it's five. And Minnesota's done with the timeouts. Ball screen to your right. Ball screen right. Ball screen. That, that has to happen when a guy is at the Big Ten logo mm -hmm. as opposed to when he's at the top of the key. Absolutely. Off a made basket. So Thompson can run the baseline if he chooses. And he does get to Russell. Here comes the trap. Oh, look out. Off of Scott. Here's a chance. Minnesota. Will they jack the three? It's Hollins. <clears throat> and Loving with the foul. Loving gets foul. That, that's a rookie mistake. He didn't have it in his hands. So Andre Hollins had to take it in on the rim and just get points. If he had caught it clean, hey, make or miss, let's go. But I don't think he had it in his hands, Mike. Three on the senior, man. That would have been huge because Ohio State's really handled Minnesota's pressure, although they've shown it infrequently quite well. And just the right time, the fumbled catch, and that, that, that's your what Often you get one chance to make the run and that may have been their one chance and, and that's why i said when they were seven down you know, don't take a bad shot right you create you, you'll create something and more coming from loving at the line joey king and mo walker come back in karate comes out defense here offense defense Seen some good signs of Mark Loving here tonight that the Ohio State fans really hope to see. It's that free throw. Walker secures it. Again, no timeouts for the Golden Gophers. King Hill shoots from there. He's got deep range. Ohio State reacted well, and Walker couldn't catch it cleanly. And that may do it. Yeah, that was really good defense by Mark Loving. Mark Loving sold out. Hey, the shot they made King shot fake and ran him off the three-point line. Really alert by Mark Loving. We mentioned that three-game suspension for Loving. Let's watch him here. Yeah, watch here. He, he, there's Loving there, and here's King. You don't put your hands down. You know what's coming. And watch Loving. He runs him out. Comes out, even jumps past him, which is fine. And then look at there. Pretty good by Amir Williams. And that was really good anticipation, really good recognition by two guys, Williams and Loving. So Loving had that suspension. He's come back, he's played six games. He has totaled 19 points and made only four field goals in those six games. It's five field goals here alone tonight. So not just his confidence, but the confidence of the Ohio State team in Mark Loving, having him back and a big part of the scoring, huge for this team down the stretch. Mike, Mike there are energy givers. And there are energy takers on the team. And, and I really feel like Mark Loving had been an energy taker since he's been coming back, meaning he kind of sucks the life 
out of the team. Others have to pick him up. Today, he was an energy giver, and he was an energy giver right from the get-go. And as I, it's amazing what happens for you when you decide to give yourself to the game, your team, your coach, and don't worry about it. Just play with some energy, and good things happen for everybody. Two separate stories here. Scott comes to the line. One, the Minnesota seniors. Don't know if they'll make the NIT at 17 and 15, but Andre Hollins, Mo Walker, DeAndre Matthew, Elliot Eliason, and Kendall Shell, a walk-on who was put on scholarship in his last semester of his sophomore year. They, they will be leaving this Gopher program. And on the other side for Thad Mata, all he's thinking about is a win to the semifinals. It's Michigan State tomorrow night. But he will become the all-time winningest coach in Ohio State history, and he'll get his 400th career win. An extraordinary resume. Really well-respected. Great football tradition at Ohio State. And he has built one heck of a basketball power here the last few years. Matthew on the drive scores. Ohio State on the hit ahead to Loving. They'll take care of business, and the Buckeyes will move on. And Thad Mata is the all-time winningest basketball coach in Ohio State history. He passes Fred Taylor. And to boot, it's career victory number 400.